Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 25th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We haven't really seen a lot of posts this year talking about malicious spam in part because it hasn't really been all that common as it used to. But one malware family that's still going strong is Emotet and Brad, as a reminder, has a recent sample that he is discussing in his latest diary post. As usual, you get plenty of indicators of compromise as well as packet captures that, of course, you can use to train your own analysis skills. In this particular case, the malicious document was a Word document. And yes, the user has to enable macros in order to be infected. Now, Emotet, of course, is just the spreader or drop or whatever you want to call it, essentially the part that will then download additional malware. In Brad's case, this was the good old Seuss Panda banker malware. Well, in today's your lucky day, we have a second diary that's dealing with uh, packet captures. The second one is by Tom, and he's talking about cell phone tracker software that is created by cellphonetrackers.co. Now, this is sort of software that you would install on a cell phone in order to spy on whoever is using the particular cell phone. The sad part here is not just how much spying you can do with the software, but also that all the data is exfiltrated in the clear. So no HTTPS and it goes way beyond some of the standards of GPS tracking. It does, for example, record phone calls and then exfiltrate the audio files again without any encryption. Now, I'm not sure why anybody really would have a legitimate reason to install tracking software that's that invasive. Usually you have things like, for example, family tracking or such that typically evolves around GPS tracking and typically requires that the owner of the phone agrees to being tracked. And CertCC released a coordinated vulnerability announcement that does affect most common Bluetooth implementations. The vulnerability was actually found by researchers at the Israel Institute of Technology. And what they figured out was that in the elliptic curve encryption, the encryption parameters are not properly validated. This is a somewhat known attack and well uh, common in other implementations of elliptic curve and diffie hellman key exchanges. And what it really means is that an attacker who is able to intercept the Bluetooth communication may be able actually to decrypt it. Now, it looks like that all the affected players have released updates recently to fix this vulnerability. Of course, the problem is you now have to apply this patch to all devices that are using Bluetooth, which of course, again, with Internet of Things devices that like Bluetooth may be more challenging. Windows appears to be not affected, but uh, Apple products and Linux are affected. Also products by Broadcom, Intel, and others are affected. And Apache patched a critical vulnerability in the OpenWhisk platform. Now, the OpenWhisk platform does implement serverless computing, where essentially you're uploading code into Docker containers that then is used by multiple users. Now, the Docker container itself listens on port 8080 on localhost in order to allow you to execute the code and also to update the code. The problem here is that if you do have code running inside this container that is subject to server-side request forging, then this code could be used to trigger a request to this internal interface and then update the code. 
So any future requests will then be processed by this malicious code that was uploaded by the attacker. OpenWhisk is also the backend to IBM's serverless cloud functions platform. So if you're running this, uh, please update. The exploit is extremely simple and the company that found this vulnerability, PureSec, already published details in how to exploit it. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.